Hello, and welcome to Undereducated, Overstimulated. We'd like to thank you for choosing to spend the next hour with us, or more likely, the next 15 minutes. Before we begin this auditory orgasmic experience that is this show, please watch this brief video to ensure that your experience is both safe and enjoyable. If listening in a public place, please be sure to put on your headphones. Even though they call him Amicable Avery, not everything he says will be age appropriate. Protect the children from our ramblings to ensure that our future remains bright. There may be times where the editor chooses to use trademarked or copyrighted materials without their owner's permission. For our safety, and for yours you fucking snitch, please refrain from reporting this video to the authorities. Although rare, there is a possibility of a complete societal collapse occurring during your time listening to this episode. In this unlikely event, your phones may lose connection and you won't be able to continue enjoying the show. Instead, violent outbursts will occur, invoking a response from the authorities. And since all faith in our governmental systems will be lost, factions will emerge from the chaos. These groups will be bound together by short-sighted, emotionally charged ideologies. You, however, you'd go it alone. Because you've always been more of a free-thinking type, you're not easily whipped up into a frenzy. So you wander the ruins of society, careful to stay out of the way of these ideologues with big dreams and even bigger guns. Not long after this though, the bombs begin to fly. These terrible weapons of mass destruction are finally being used again. Dear God, save us. Thankfully though, you, you left any urban center likely to be hit quite by the these introduction to our podcast. <laughs> the crazy thing is, it was out in the waste where you met someone special. Who would have thought that someone could find the love in such a time? I love the you. world oh. crumbling apart around you, and you found someone to share the rest of your lives with? You definitely didn't see the aliens coming, though. Those of you with YouTube Premium will be unaffected by such an occurrence because you can download videos for later watching. And finally, please be sure to <laughs> like this video, leave a comment, and share it with a friend. Your help with this brings us one step closer to being able to actually hire an editor that would save you from my subpar editing skills. <laughs> Hell yeah. And now, please, sit back, relax, put on your headphones. Just put the headphones the on, you know. Keep everybody safe. I mean, dude, we do not want to corrupt these children. They're super well, corruptible. Yeah, yeah. Or do we, though? I feel like it's either us or the Bluey and fucking Baby Shark. True. And what's the other one? Uh, oh, dude. Oh. Um, I'm going to spend 30 minutes thinking about what the name of this kid's show is. It's got like the, the dogs and the... Oh, that's Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. We all that know Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. Coco Melon. You know Coco Melon? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a deep cut. I mean, yeah. you got to have kids to know about Coco Melon. I guess not, though. We it, both well, know about <laughs> Coco Melon. We both have kids. Um, <clears throat> but Paw Patrol is just... Teaches bad lessons left. It does. Yeah, yeah. teaches kids how to be what would seem to be punks. You know. Oh, how so? I never really watched it. Um. Well, you know, I was living in my living situation last year. There was this two-year-old in the house, kind of ran the show, and he liked to watch his Paw Patrol. And I don't actually have. I can't recall necessarily exactly what it was but i remember watching it <laughs> relatively often because it was on mm -hmm. and be like what like no way like huh no, that's are they not teaching good. him to talk to the feds snitch um snitch for sure snitch for sure yeah yeah, yeah. never snitch no nope. even if it's really really fucked up don't do it Mm-hmm. um yeah i yep. i seen um so i was telling kaylee about this there's a really dark side to youtube so Actually, I don't know if it's the biggest or just like a really big chunk of viewership on YouTube is actually children. And it's huh. parents that, you know, give them an iPad or a phone, whatever. Not yeah. knocking it. Not a huge fan, but I understand. Yeah. Raising kids is hard. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to take that route. So they'll give the kids the iPad and then the kids will go like down this YouTube rabbit hole, just like any one of us would. But even on YouTube kids, all it takes is for someone to say like, this content is age appropriate and they'll do a quick scrub of it or have an algorithm do a quick scrub of it and say, all right, cool. Put it on kids YouTube. So a lot of these videos will be 
all innocuous at first of like people dressed up like Spider-Man or Elsa from Frozen. And then it's a 45 minute video. And after you get 10, 15, 20 minutes in, it starts getting into some fucked up shit like violence, abuse and things like this. And so they'll hide these terrible kind of experiences really in these kids videos and kids will watch it not even knowing how this ended up happening what's wrong with it parents don't know that their kids even watch this yeah and it's it's fucked up and i wonder who's doing this you know it's easy to think oh well it's just internet people like 4chan that they're you say 4chan 4chan like people that just like chaos okay and they want to watch the world burn in some kind of way not saying everybody on 4chan is like that but you know what i'm saying so the I don't know. I have this other thought. Of what if it's our modern day MK Ultra or the continuation of MK Ultra? Because I don't think MK Ultra ever ended. It's like just a psyop on the human pop, the oh. American population, or maybe it's foreign governments that are trying to fuck up the future generations. I don't know. Yeah, I'm well, just thinking. So psyop. I keep hearing the word and seeing it. Psyop. Like P P S Y O P. Psychological what? operation. Oh, okay, okay. I thought it was like, honestly, I thought it was um, similar to like a platypus or like some sort of animal. Um, and I thought you were, people were saying like you're being like a psyop, like you're being like a platypus or you're, <laughs> or or something. Um, or I thought there was like this Pokemon that is called like psyops or something. There is now. Um, I guess so. I, I truly had no idea. <clears throat> Um, that's interesting yeah so huh. i won't dive too deep into this rabbit hole because it'll i'll show my ass and how much i little how much how little i actually know these things mm -hmm. but mk ultra was a series of experiments undertaken by the cia cia basically has carte blanche do whatever you want black budget you don't have to tell us how you spend your money you get this insane amount of money and they have no repercussions under the law so they did these tests on American and Canadian citizens. And in a lot of cases, they unwittingly dosed them with LSD mm -hmm. or tried to brainwash them or like submitted them to torture and all these different things. And it was all in the efforts of either creating like an ability to brainwash people, create sleeper agents, all this stuff during the Cold War, huh. because the Russians were experimenting with sleeper agents and shit like that. And so the Americans were like, we got to do it too. And they ended up, yeah, basically using the American populace as guinea pigs without their knowledge. Mm. And there are a lot of people who got really fucked up from it, people that died from it, and there's just no repercussions for this kind of thing. That's crazy. And the crazy thing is that people, yeah. like all these documents are declassified. If you talk about them now, there's a lot of people who would be like, oh, that's a conspiracy. It's like, well, yeah, it was until it was declassified. And then it kind of yeah. shows that it's true, but huh. there's an idea where in the modern age that kind of shit doesn't happen. People like, yeah. oh, we're too civilized. Yeah. Like, well, they were saying that 50 years ago, too. Yeah, 100 years ago, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Um, it just kind of, I mean, I'm feeling a little undereducated at this <laughs> at this moment, a little overstimulated. Yeah, oh, okay. fair enough. I thought a psyops was a creature, and I thought MK Ultra was a strain of wheat. <laughs> 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 Which I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I believe um, it. But it's it's history. It's uh, yeah, American history. They don't teach in American history. Huh. Yeah, I'm, gotta gotta love our school system in rural America. Just teaching us up real good. Dude, I mean, even I was in South Florida, which isn't quite rural. It's not quite the South, you know, big urban center. But mm -hmm. it's just for. I mean, I understand. First of all, there's too much to teach. Second of all, if you make the curriculum, you're not going to make curriculum that undermines your authority yeah fair enough yeah i wouldn't do it either but mm -hmm. there is a there's this crazy thing where even though the information is out there there's a unwillingness to look at it and having these conversations conversations especially here in town <laughs> dude i'm all over the place i'm looking <laughs> oh i actually had a couple of beers before i came i forgot all about them uh i like conversations though. conversations are great <laughs> yeah. it's the se my second favorite pokemon right after psyop <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot of people. And then when you just bring up uncomfortable conversations, like the one that I just brought up, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People shut down, man. Yeah, and yeah. and they actually get angry at you for bringing it up because it kind of rocks I've their world in a that. lot of I've places. That for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were talking about that the other day. There's just a lot of people who they they'll either close up or they'll attack you or your ideas. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I think it's part human nature and part what we're taught. But like, fear is just like what really it seems to drive a lot of us and creates like what our realities are. Mm-hmm. And if, if something is outside of what we deem comfortable or real, like we'll just write it off. You know, it's not real. It's yeah. not happening. It's like, okay. Um, um, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> this, have you seen uh, Dune or read Dune? No. Or listened to Dune? Nope. I'd recommend that audio book. I know you're on a, yeah. music tip right now but maybe when you're working check out the audiobook it's pretty in depth but there's this one line in it that's super popular and it's a long part of a longer phrase that I don't have fully memorized but basically fear is the mind killer fear is the the silent death that happens before something mm. or the other and it's basically saying when you let fear drive you like your ability to act to handle a situation just completely goes away because you're in fight or flight. Okay. Yeah. And so yep. it's it's all it's a motto that they kind of tell themselves over and over so that they can handle yeah. more intense situations. Yeah, I actually vibe with that quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the ability to maintain calmness <clears throat> is. Next time, could you do that right into the mic? Uh, <laughs> clear my throat right into the mic. I, uh, <clears throat> I I inhaled a little too much concrete dust today, probably. Oh, fair. Um, Silicosis I, is real. I I believe that, and that's not a Pokemon. <laughs> Sounds like a Pokemon. Um, um, all right, staying on point, staying on track, <laughs> though. Um, kind of. Uh, last night I was listening to this album, and it was I want to say transcendental. Um, not fully sure if that's the right word, but. I'm using it. <laughs> Fair. We don't use words correctly here. We just use them. Yeah, that's what they're meant to meant for, you know. Um, but it was it was amazing, honestly. I like kind of stumbled upon it on accident, um, and I was having a nice little evening toke, you know, on the back porch, and then I proceeded to just sit there for I don't know, probably a, right about two hours just in the dark looking at the stars um and just thinking like this this music was just very thought provoking in no particular direction except a positive one it was all like just very positive Mm -hmm. thought coming from it um and it was it was just extremely pleasant it was just i think exactly what i needed um i think i need to do a little more of that yeah yeah. there's and there's something about taking a toke. I know we've talked, I don't know if we talked about this on the pod, but we talk about it often, I feel like, at this point. Yeah. There's something about taking a little puff and sitting down, chilling, thinking. It just makes it so much easier to do that kind of thing. Yeah. But like when I'm not high, not that I do drugs, when I'm not high, theoretically, there's just too much pressure and this waxes and wanes throughout my life to do shit yeah to be productive to do something worth like the accolades that you want to achieve in life i mean it's that pressure to achieve is ever present it feels like yeah yeah and there's something about getting high that just melts all of that away and makes you realize that hey you know life is whatever you want to make out of it you can put as much pressure on yourself as you want. You can set the bar super high, but like at the end of the day, you're the one setting the bar for yourself. You know, it's yeah. really on you, yeah. what you want to do and what you don't want to do. And achievements only matter as much as you make them matter, right? Yeah. No, it's a nice. It's almost acts as like an excuse. You know, when I catch when I have a toke, and I'm like, oh well, I'm stoned. I can't drive. I can't work. I can't text because. <laughs> When I try to text when I'm stoned, dude, it just doesn't make sense. The text um, messages you send out when you're high is just <laughs> something else. Well, I um, my thumbs uh, are pretty just like 
hard and like calloused, so mm-hmm. like my phone doesn't really register when I touch it very much. Fair. Um, and uh, then when I'm stoned, I don't proofread anything. So I <laughs> tap, 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 and I send it. And often it's, I feel like it's just gibberish. Like it hardly makes any sense. Dude, I'm more surprised that you proofread things when you're sober. Uh, it's been a, it's been a learning yeah. curve. You know, I used to not at all, but then I like. I confuse a lot of people, and now that I get, run my own business, um, I really got to double read. And some, honestly, I got to like triple and quadruple read it because yeah. often like I'll just like glaze over it, and I'll read what I wanted to say, and then I like, read it again. I'm like, wait, uh, it doesn't even say that. Nice. Learning, learning. Dude, yeah. that was quick. Quick turnaround on that. Thank What's you. a psyop? Not a platypus. Definitely not a platypus. We're making progress. Or a Pokemon. So, um, before we move too far from it, that whole topic of achievements and the pressure to do and succeed and achieve, I had, uh, this old coworker that old as in, I worked with him previously and he was also old. So mm-hmm. I really appreciate working with old people, especially mm-hmm. when I was a younger whelp, because I'd be able to say some of the things that. I thought was profound because I was hearing it for the first time or I thought my mm-hmm. perspective was unique because in my friend groups I was like the smart one or whatever and mm-hmm. talking to an older person and then them shedding light on a lot of my misconceptions but mm-hmm. I remember one story particularly because I've never had an urge to work to really do things and I think a lot of that has to do with the kind of work you do uh-huh. but this guy told me a story about a man that would sit on a beach against a palm tree and just kind of chill. And then mm-hmm. one day, this business dude's walking by, you know, working downtown at the beach, Miami Beach, a lot of buildings over there. Yeah. So he's walking by and he goes, what are you doing sitting against the tree? It's the middle of the work day. Like, why aren't you working? He's like, oh, I don't really work. It's like, I just like to chill out. Like, huh. What do you mean you don't work? What do you do when you're hungry? Well, when I'm hungry, I go fish and I catch a fish i cook it up and i eat it he's like well when you catch a fish why don't you catch like two fish and then you can sell the other fish and then keep doing that he's like why would i do that hmm. like well because then you make more money and you keep catching fish selling fish you can catch more sell more and eventually you can get yourself your own fishing boat hmm. why it's like when you got your own fishing boat you hire a crew you start catching a shit ton of fish you build a fishing empire you get rich off of selling fish. Hmm. Why? It's like, so then you could finally relax and like retire and, you know, yeah. sit on the beach and <laughs> yeah. <it's> fish. <laughs> it's exactly. like, dude. Exactly. And yeah, that kind of shit. And I, I know that's an oversimplification. There's a million people out there watching right now that are like, oh, yeah, I mean, it's easy to say, but we all got bills to pay. Fair. Yeah. For sure. We also all have gotten caught up in this trap of like living above our means we have why do you need two chairs why do you need 20 forks that the 20 forks is a great question um, two, chairs, two chairs i mean if you have company I mean, yeah. right. why do you need five chairs <laughs> yeah yeah that's an odd number <clears throat> but no nah, and i mean there's there's plenty of us that I feel like make do with what we've got. We recycle and upcycle certain things and try and stretch things until their last legs. But there's a lot of people who just kind of live to buy and live yeah, to buy shit. Consumer life. And it makes I never, them feel good. Personally, I never went to the mall or anything as a oh. kid growing up, partially because I lived in the country and I was far away. Um, also, partially because my parents would not allow it. Mm. Um, and I just I was never interested, you know. It's just like, I don't know. They smell weird. It's all rubbery and plastic and bright lights and fair, yeah. I like dirt and mm-hmm. trees and stuff and not rubber trees. Not rubber trees, though. I do think the telephone poles that are made to look like trees or like the the freaky, right? Kind of freaky. Kind of. I kind of appreciate it though, too. Definitely appreciate it. Um, but when you see it, you're like, ah. what else isn't actually a yeah. tree? It's like, if you hide them amongst trees, fair. But they're always out in the middle of, like, the thing. So they're clearly yeah. fake. Yeah. Like, let's just let it be fake. Huh. I wonder if they'll ever put Christmas lights on them. That's a great idea. Christmas season. I, I would. That's personally. a good service we could provide. Yeah? 
Just get a boom lift? I think people would be into that. Um, so also over this this past week between our last episode of um, Undereducated and Overstimulated, I've, I've been doing, I've been giving it some thought actually. And what is it? <clears throat> it being the podcast and mm-hmm. the whole the whole adventure that we're going on here. Um, one of my thoughts was, do we look at the camera? Like, are we supposed to look at the camera more? Yeah. Because so I actually thought about this. Sorry uh, to cut you off, but yeah, the ideal situation is that we're sitting opposite of each other and looking at each other. Uh huh. And we have two cameras at a slight angle looking at us. Oh. Um, cat hair <clears throat> man pardon me <laughs> um, yeah although I like looking back at the first week's episode it was I kind of liked it it seemed it's not bad it seemed relatively intimate uh, it's less work for me I don't have to cut between cameras yeah and we just get to gaze at each other and share conversation I, I don't know how I actually <laughs> feel about my profile uh-huh. you know but oh, I'll let it slide I didn't think I looked too bad in the last episode yeah, you know, I thought you looked sharp. Um, I, feel wearing... like, I feel like my side profile, I've got like this kind of larger nose, mm-hmm. bit of a beak here and a small chin. Um, yeah, so my chin actually comes farther back than I feel like it does. Yeah. You, know, you always see yourself head on. We got to grow our beards out. I can't, dude. I can get the goat, but this doesn't ever connect. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm a little sparse on the sides too and... I I frankly have never fully committed or tried. I've gone like a couple weeks, and it just looks a little ratty. It looks ratty as fuck. Yeah. <clears throat> on um, you, not on me. Well, <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll wait till uh, November. November, November, yeah. November. No nut. I mean, no shave November. No shave November. I don't know if I could do that first one. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see a license plate that's got a triple A, and I'm like. Ugh. A triple A. N N. Oh, 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 oh. Triple A, I mean. Doesn't make sense not to have it. Mm-hmm. I don't have it. Do you have triple A? No. <laughs> I've got progressive toe or something. Oh, that's nice. Similar to camel toe. But, um, it's progressive toe. Not too dissimilar um, from a psyop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> pardon my... <laughs> Jesus Christ, got, like dude. a toad in my throat or something. Um, actually, it's probably just concrete dust for the most part. Your uh, client is gonna hate this episode. Um, honestly, uh, I don't know if I'll watch it. <laughs> Fair. I, I was actually talking with him about it. I was like, "Oh, dude, he's older, like maybe fifty. Okay. Um, I don't know. Hard to tell. Though. Middle aged. Middle aged. Middle aged. Yeah. Not not older." handsome as can be yeah <laughs> um, i learned not to call old people old they do not like it yeah at what point do you think they do like it though 72 72 yeah i feel like that's there's no denying it at that point yeah when you're 70 you're like hey i'm pretty much still 60 yeah when you're 71 yeah maybe 71 71 take er- it back. early yeah. 70s yeah yeah, yeah yeah i guess it depends on the person sure yeah i um saw this instagram of some apparently she was 72 Mm -hmm. looked great um and she was selling some like pill that helped you make you look young and stuff um i was sold i was like damn that lady is 72 and she looks like maybe 54 like a healthy 54 nice good for her yeah Uh, we'll put her instagram handle right here yeah whatever her name is just (laughs) cupping her instagram handle let's put a picture up Ping. <laughs> um, but I feel like I'm already off topic. Yeah, thinking about the podcast, mm-hmm. thinking about looking at the camera, making just some nice intimate eye contact with it, helping the crowd feel more engaged, but not doing it too much where it's weird. Uh-huh. Um, not licking my lips too much either. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <clears throat> anyways, clearing my throat more this week. Side note, next week I'll clear my throat less. Uh, maybe. Just hold your breath. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or my voice will just get raspier and raspier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I got, I, uh, you know, we shared with a few people. We got like 32 views, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I was, it was a success. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, 
some positive feedback, you know? Yeah. And then some also some nice little tips. Mm -hmm. um, what else did you get besides being too all over the place? I didn't actually hear the other kind of uh, constructive criticism. Um, the constructive... <laughs> Consistism. Just the constructive stuff. I don't want any of the other stuff. <laughs> Unconstructive. Uh, the constructive stuff was like, well, my roommate was like, you should like, you had some really interesting topics apparently um, and points. Uh, she's like, you should just dive a little deeper into those. Yeah. Um, and I'm, f I'm conflicted about that because mm. it feels like we should, or like we should do that, but then that kind of starts to feel like a podcast, you know? Yeah, and that's not what we're going for. <laughs> no. <laughs> or you know how like the the podcast culture is like the like um like we were talking about hay bales for a moment last week mm -hmm. and then they're like, yeah. Oh, let's go let's go back in on that and like really dive deep on hay bales and like the whole history and like all this stuff that probably a lot of people find interesting but I don't have the attention span for. You think a lot of people find hay bales interesting? Uh, I would uh, yeah. I think huh. Yeah. I think Honestly, I think, say, say you're a kid, or not a kid, a person, grew up in the uh, city, never really left the city, mm -hmm. don't yep, really know where me. your food comes from, that's me. and then you hear about a hay bale, hmm. and you're like, what the fuck is a hay bale? That should go in the back of a truck, then you sit on the hay bale while the truck drives you through the corn maze, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the only exposure, really, I have with hay bales. Yeah, or maybe it's like on the side of like... Uh, um, oh, a street luging course, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, or like the, a go kart, the, like the box car kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. Like street luging. That sounds dirty. It does street luging? It sounds a little bit. Um, it sounds illegal, frankly. I wouldn't do it. No, me either. <laughs> <laughs> You're corrupting the youth here. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah, back to that. the video. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> um, but there's so many uses for hay bales. Um. And they're really interesting. And there's so many types of hay bales. Are uh, you bowing to the pressure right now and diving into hay bales? Uh, it's just, I would say it's a shallow dive. Um, okay. Uh, I'd even call it a penguin dive. Um, for those of you who don't know what a penguin dive is. It's a Pokemon. <laughs> no. It's, um, it's a dive without using your hands, you know? So you just oh. head first. Hands are by your side like a penguin. That sounds dangerous. Um, it can be. Yeah. It, it has been dangerous before in my life. Um, I think it explains a lot of things, too. <laughs> yeah. Just diving right in your head. I didn't know the bottom of the pool was there. Yep. Actually, I did I did um, dive into the bottom of the pool once and, you know, gracefully scratched my nose, my chest, and my knuckles. Um, and uh, I had to leave the pool party after that. <sighs> Yeah, anyways, penguin dives are more for, like, the, the intention is to be, like, kind of shallow. Yeah. But you should have at least at an angle to water. Right? More of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, almost a belly flop, but not a belly flop. So so then if the, if it sounds like the feedback from both people was that we're kind of all over the place and we don't mm -hmm. dive into things too deeply. Yep. Two people saying it, give it some credence, you know? Like like I said to you on the phone though, there's a lot of different kinds of podcasts, mm -hmm. and we can't be the right kind of podcast for everyone. But I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have thoughts on this? Well, just just what if you know? Like what if, if we could we, be the podcast? Oh, no, what if we are already? And we're just not known enough. And once oh. the masses get a hold of um, our uh, content, it's like it's just right. It's like that glove, that one size glove that fits all. This is a Goldilocks podcast. Who's yeah. that bitch? <laughs> Goldilocks. Sad bitch? No, who is that bitch? Oh. <laughs> I thought you say, you sad bitch. Huh? <laughs> what? No. I just wrote up a kid's story. She, uh, she broke into a few bears' house, oh, and yeah. then she had the cold porridge, the hot porridge, and then the one that was just right. That's right. That's right. Where the hop or where the just right, <laughs> dude. I'll tell you what. I mean, just in a personal note, how this has been going so far compared to the last one. <laughs> this feels like we took some kind of amphetamine before this podcast. Uh, it definitely feels like slightly choppy waters. Yeah. Um, here, let's let's um let's steer this into a little bit of direction. Okay. 
um, because I think we need it. Starting now. Right now. Um, <clears throat> you said we, we should have a little show and tell. Yes. I forgot to bring something. Mm, even though I reminded you three times, yes. <laughs> That's correct. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, yeah, well, I forgot to bring a physical something. I was going to bring a rock. Uh, okay. I forgot it. Um, so I brought a thought. Okay. Um, and this thought I ran, I've run past two people already today. The first being this guy that I'm working for. <laughs> and he was like, uh, what are you smoking? <laughs> I was like, oh, ha ha, that means. MK Ultra. Yeah, only the finest. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so I figured, I was like, maybe it's not the greatest thought. Um, but then I ran it past my roommate, and they were like, they just rolled with it. Hmm. And they, they seemed to enjoy the thought. So. I'll give it a whirl here. Um, and I was just thinking, I was looking in my closet the other night. I got all this clothes in there. Yeah. And it just, I couldn't help but wonder, like, do clothes, like, if clothes had a consciousness, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, clothes story. Not Toy Story, clothes story. Clothes story. Mm-hmm. That one flew right over my head. Oh, that's right. You don't watch movies. Sorry, move on. Continue. <laughs> they get it. Um, and, uh, okay, anyway, so if clothes had a consciousness, do you think that they, like, want to be put on? Or, like, when they get put on, is that, like, going to work for them? And they actually just want to stay and hang out in their closet or in the dresser? <laughs> um, I would say no. I would say they want to be put on. Yeah. If if their lives outside of being worn were a little more robust, mm-hmm. I'd say maybe they'd want to not be worn. Yeah. But they are being essentially put into a stasis, cryogenically frozen, until the next time they need to be used. Yeah. So then are sweaters, are they homebodies? Do sweaters, do you think they like to stay home more than, say, like... A pair of pants because I feel like pants like to get out there um, yeah see the world huh I guess so um, there's certain kinds of sweaters I would imagine things that might be water resistant mm-hmm. or yeah I don't know if you'd call a windbreaker a sweater that sure uh, close enough outerwear <laughs> so they would want to go out I imagine because if they're designed I think we're, we're getting down to how much do you enjoy doing the thing that you're designed to do? And let's bring this back to the yeah. only thing we can really, I mean, we'll actually work our way up to humans. Dogs. Mm-hmm. At this point in time, majority of dogs are kind of designed, they're bred to provide companionship. And that's what they love to do. Mm-hmm. Cats. I've never thought about that. Yeah. That dogs are designed for companionship. Well, think about hunting dogs. Uh-huh. They fucking love to hunt. Yeah. Or pointers. When they find shit, they, ooh, and they <laughs> love it, dude. They freak out. Huh. Yeah. And they get this huge, you see, when they actually get to the duck or whatever it is, they fucking huge satisfaction. Yeah. And they're super happy they did it. Cats. Cats will bring you over a dead mouse. They'll be like, I got this for you. That's what hmm. they're made for, or bred for. I'm not saying that's what they're made for. Hmm. I don't play God. But cats have a place in our society historically because they're great at killing rodents, mm-hmm. which would keep them out of our food supply. And so... The cats? Well, the cats will keep the rodents out of the food supply. No. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, cats not going to eat dried rice or beans. So... These animals, when they actually do the thing that they are designed for, are bred for, mm-hmm. they feel great. Think about a human being. You, Did, This is a long shot. Sorry. Uh-huh, Have you uh-huh. seen the movie WALL-E? No. Okay. Gist of it is however many years into the future, humanity. <laughs> we're going to need to start getting you on a regimen. <laughs> i got to start watching movies. Humanity has completely demolished Earth. It's just essentially one giant trash heap. And they've gone on Mm. to like intergalactic cruise ships and they've grown to be this huge fat people that live on floating chairs and like everything they want is just done for them. And they're essentially just, it's a consumerism taken to a million, but 
there's a lot of people, you know, that movie is basically making a statement. It's like, oh, overconsumption is a problem. Yeah. For yeah. sure. We all know. It's taking it to the extreme to really make the point. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who are like, humans would never get to that point. And there's a lot of mm-hmm. people that would. But I think we're on that path where there's still a lot of people that won't. There's people that go out and watch David Goggins and fucking it, it, it inspires them. He's this insane Navy SEAL. You know? Mm, um, He writes books. He might have written a book, but <clears throat> he uh, he was a Navy SEAL and he runs marathons and just mm. huge endurance athlete. He's completely torn to shreds just because he continues to work out. Yeah. Um, I like... I like to think about stuff very literally because mm-hmm. um, often, especially with our, the English language, like when you think about something literally, it doesn't make much sense. So I'm, I'm picturing a Navy SEAL right now. <laughs> Navy colored. <laughs> yeah, Navy yeah. colored SEAL in the Navy um, <laughs> who's also running a marathon. Dude, that's a Navy Navy SEAL. A Navy Navy SEAL? Yeah. That's pretty impressive. And they can run a marathon. Imagine that. Imagine seeing a seal out there just outpacing. We're doing it again, dude. We're going off the rails. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, sorry. So, I'll, I'll take my literal uh, mind and just, you know, uh, tuck it away a little bit here. Yes. To, to bring it back to the metaphorical and to kind of wrap up my long exposition on the nature of things doing their nature and enjoying it. Mm-hmm. I think there are people... And, you know, the feeling that I was describing earlier of guilt for not achieving something, Mm -hmm. I think that's partially society, but it's also partially because us as human beings don't want to just sit around and consume. And we want to do something beyond that. Mm -hmm. And so a shirt, a pair of pants, a pair of underwear wouldn't want to just sit in a drawer. That's a good point. And never get used. It's like you want to do the thing that you are made for yeah and here's my question to you how do you Mm -hmm. think they feel about getting washed oh man that is a great question i haven't even thought remotely about that but i kind of think it might be fun Mm -hmm. it might be like a lot of fun um because they're in there with all their friends um i feel like i feel like all other articles of clothing really like socks like everybody gets along with socks yeah, I've heard uh, that about them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're just they're just good company, you know. Fresh socks. Not worn socks. Worn snock snocks. Worn <laughs> socks just they give off this vibe, you know, this odor. Uh-huh. They get all these little holes in them. Oh my god, dude. Dude, um do your socks have holes in them? A couple. Not uh, too many. Dang. I was hoping you were gonna say no. Why? Because uh, I'm like, well, then how did you put them on? <laughs> <laughs> a couple is actually perfect yeah oh, wow. that's just holes. damn dude <laughs> you almost got me I didn't even realize I avoided that <laughs> that, was, that was well maneuvered you want to try it again um that's alright <laughs> <laughs> um thank you though for keeping um us on on track with the uh clothing I was once we were talking about Navy SEALs, I had completely forgot about <laughs> the socks. <laughs> well, I can bring it back even further. Let's. We were talking about the things that you thought about this week about the podcast. And we covered mm-hmm. the uh, feedback that we got about staying more on topic. Mm-hmm. Did you have anything else that you thought of? Oh, well, personally, I kind of vibe with being um, an openly ADHD podcast mm. you're out and proud yeah, yeah yeah i can't focus um what huh <laughs> unless <laughs> unless it's on a pair of nice uh, socks socks and we'll even her instagram even, handle here even then i get a little distracted <laughs> um, <laughs> um but i think it's kind of i think it would be potentially fun to be like an, an openly adhd or <laughs> Um, distracted or we just say we're openly confused um, dude saying you're openly anything is just fucking <laughs> comedy gold yeah. um, I feel like we need to come up with bits to kind of start doing in our friend group and mm-hmm. see how much we could throw people off dude we could do body cams 
We could do hidden camera things. Would we ha- would we have to give like a little disclaimer before we go hang out with people though? I think it's only illegal if they find out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Oregon is one of those states. You can't mm. actually just record people without their consent, huh? Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I don't truly know. have no idea. We can find out. Yeah. Yeah. Give the old rookie try and see if it works. Um, tomorrow morning, tomorrow midday, I'm going to go play kickball. So tomorrow I'm actually going to go see, Kaylee and I are going to go see a comedian that I really enjoy. His name is Matt McCusker. Shout out the shaman. Oh. Um, I listened to his podcast, him and his buddy Shane. Hmm. They're both comedians. Gillis? Shane. Shane Gillis, yeah. Gillis. Oh. So Matt McCusker is pretty fucking funny, dude. I think huh. you would enjoy him. They call him the shaman because the things that he comes out with are not so... I guess he toes the line of like being a spiritual guy mm-hmm. while also being very jokey about it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we... I, Watched his special when it came out too. It was very funny, and so he's finally on tour and going to Portland. So we're gonna go see him tomorrow mm-hmm. night. I also gotta buy a suit because we've got four weddings coming up. Oh damn! In the span of like ten months. Yeah, eight yeah. months. But still, yeah, I need to look dapper. I got asked. Yeah. Um, my buddy from I've known him since middle school is getting married in December of this year. Asked me to be his mm. best man. I felt oh. very honored. You know who you are. Wow. You're probably not going to see this. And then um, another buddy shares the same name, which I've also known since middle school, asked me to officiate his wedding. Shares the same name as you? No, it's my other buddy. Oh, oh okay. okay. So I'm going to be a best man. I'm going to officiate. And then the other wedding is a family friend of Kaylee's. And then another wedding is another guy I've known since middle school. But... Damn. I don't think I made it to the groomsmen roster yeah, yeah just, just yet. We'll see. That one's still a little while out. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. I actually also have a, a wedding coming up. It's not you want to share the suit? Not mine. Um, <laughs> that, I could be into that. <laughs> currently, I'm getting this... Um, I'm getting an old suit from like the 70s, I want to say, or 80s. That's exactly what Kaylee wants for me. Um, are you going to get it tailored? I don't think I'm going to do any of that. I think I'm just going to get whatever I can find. In reality, so here's the thing. The wedding we're going to next is going to be uh, in the Midwest, a little bit more conservative and old-fashioned. I think Mm -hmm. if I showed up in a 70s suit, especially she's going to be like up there on stage with the people and I'm going to be sitting out alone, I would stick out Mm -hmm. so bad, especially probably being like the only Latino guy there. Um, and that's what you're going for? <laughs> Just being as flamboyant, audacious, <laughs> openly Latino. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, for sure. That's good. That's good. Um, no, but so this wedding um, that I'm going to in October here, getting this old suit from my brother, uh, my brother's father-in-law. So I guess that makes him my father-in-law too. Uh, or maybe his father huh. La Lala. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I'm kind of excited though. What I'm thinking though, because it's for this wedding is for my other brother, and he he wants us to look dapper and whatnot, mm-hmm. and grow out thick bushy mustaches. Oh, um, so I'm working on the thick bushy mustache. But then I'm gonna get this, and he he wants to go for like a like a uh, early western kind of vibe mm, too you know bolos i think so i yeah. think so um and so i was thinking i'd get this it's like an old it looks like a wool um suit and it's got like checkers but not like checkers um nice so i get it all tailored up so i look nice and sharp and i was gonna wear a driver's cap um, Ooh, i feel like you could wear a driver's cap yeah yeah grow, grow the hair out a little longer you know comb it back i can see that for you yeah yeah and then i was just gonna chain smoke cigarettes in the crowd (laughs) so i guess this might have slipped right by me i was only like half paying attention your brother's father-in-law is getting married no i'm getting the suit for my brother's okay 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 and then my other brother is getting married gotcha um 
Which I'm 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 excited for. It should be up a hoot, you know. Mm-hmm. It's down in Northern California somewhere, and you know it's just fun getting together with the whole the whole fam. And then I haven't met my brother's fiance's family at all. Your soon to be sister in law? Yeah. Oh, you mean her family? Yeah, yeah. You've met her though. I've met her a nice. lot. Good people. Good. Yeah, yeah. She's good stuff. Um, really good stuff actually. Nice. Top notch person. Sweet. Yeah. Um. But I don't know that any of the rest of her family, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'll, that'll be cool. I they're mean, they're also Hoosiers. They're from Indiana. Oh. Dude, I've I've been putting parchment paper in my Tupperwares before I put food in them. Mm-hmm. Because I, I did this with some watermelon the other week. I was going on this date, and, you know, you got to bring watermelon on a date because... Wait. What? Oh, this isn't a date? <laughs> Um, but, yeah, it kind of tastes like dish soap and onions. <laughs> so it wasn't great. Um, you live and you learn. Yeah. Also, what's what's the cat's name again? Family. Family. Family Pooley. Hey, Family. What's up, buddy? Family Pooley. He's a good cat. He's a little bit skittish. Yeah. What's up, um, bud? Our audience was curious about the cat, you know. Like, is the cat going to come on onto your um, show? And he's made an appearance this week so far. Family Pooley. Yeah, a couple of times it feels like. Yeah, yeah. Good presence. He's got he's great, good, good, good on-camera energy. I'd pet him, but that water more on. important things going on. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> so, in grade school, uh, I had this classmate and good buddy of mine. Um, and during lunch, you kind of like had to watch your food. Because um, like, we'd be like... We'd be at lunch, we'd be playing like a board game or cards or something, and like, not with this buddy, he'd be just doing whatever he was doing, and I'd be eating, and I'd just kind of like stop for a second, like rest, and I'd be holding my sandwich out like this, and talking to whoever else, and then he'd just swoop in and just take a chomp out of it. Damn, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. vicious. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, oh, was he a goat? He might actually be. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. I mean, the, we don't judge. Yeah. Either a goat or a psyops. <laughs> Either way, he's open about it. He's openly goat. He's openly goat. Could be. Um, Dude, maybe, this whole episode is just callbacks. Um, and circlebacks. We haven't yeah. used that word yet, but uh, I think we ne- we've we done a few circlebacks. Did yeah, we-, we have done a couple circle circlebacks, and I think uh, a question of mine is, is there anything that we needed to circle back to, you know, for those of us in the audience that are a little bit more concerned about continuity. Anything else you thought of about the hmm. podcast this week or we kind of done with that topic? I just wanted to make sure we buttoned it up. Um, make sure we didn't railroad your ideas. I don't think we've necessarily buttoned it up super smooth or it's not completely buttoned up. You know, we're three quarters of the way buttoned up mm-hmm. there. Um, Showing the belly button. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, but I feel like I feel like this episode is about uh, open being openly uh, growing um, and just kind of just going through those growing pains. You know, that first episode felt really organic and just easy. You know, yeah. um, pretty pretty hyped. You know, uh, going into it um, and just just had lots to chat about. Nothing in particular. You, you know, think we'll ever run out of things to say? Um, no, I think, I think we can ramble. I think we've got that title. A little bit too much. Um, yeah. Well, we might run out of the ability to stay on topic. We may have already run out of that, but, um, It's a finite resource. Yeah. Hard to come by these days. <laughs> Dude, I tell you what, I, um, I send this to my siblings or our first episode to my siblings, all 12 of them. Um, and I think some of them watched a little bit of it. But <laughs> none of them finished it, I'm quite certain. Yeah. Um, but it's because they're all also very ADHD and can't focus. Oh. And so, like, this, like, two-ish years ago, I was helping some of my other older brothers build a house for my other older brother. Um, and that's when it dawned on me. I was like, gosh, these guys cannot stay on topic. They yeah. cannot focus. Um <laughs> And that kind of made me feel a lot better about myself. I was like, huh. It's not your fault. Yeah. It's genetic. It's just it's just who we are, you know? Um, needless to say, the project probably took a year longer than it needed to take. But yeah. 
you know, it was an adventure. That would be good if you named your like company so that the initials, the acronym of it was ADHD. Yeah. Always doing hard work daily. Close enough. A always doing, doing a there's hard. a W in there. Well, is, is hard work not one word? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> that was a good try though. It was a great try. <laughs> I feel like these days you could just make shit up, put it on Urban Dictionary, and it's only a few months till it catches on. Yeah. I was thinking about a new drink, actually. Oh. I'm calling it cum water. <laughs> <laughs> so, Instant hit. Yeah. Cucumber melon water. So, like, it's full of electrolytes and good stuff. And just, yeah, C-U-M water, cum water. <laughs> I think <laughs> stop what I was expecting. <laughs> Dude. Today at work, the girl that works with me, um, so we had a couple of drinks after work, all of us, mm -hmm. and my boss was like, Oh, you know, go in the fridge, there's drinks. And she's like, Oh, what is there? He's like, Oh, we've got this and that and he goes, We got ranch water. Have you ever seen those? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And she goes, Why do you have ranch flavored water? <laughs> yeah. She's so deadpan all the time it's hard yeah. to pick up when she makes a joke she was joking then so she says yeah but dude the thought of ranch water killed me yeah. and i thought that was the funniest thing i'd hear today until i heard <laughs> cum water well okay first of all don't defend it i know i think i might i might have a crush on this lady who's talking about ranch water because that is just right up my alley for sense of humor um <laughs> And that's that's valuable. That's yeah. really valuable. I'll know? connect you too. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's also kind of funny because I was um, joking with some folks the other night about ranch water, and like I, I had the actual Texas ranch water. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Yeah. It tastes like incense. It's like not good in my opinion. Is it alcoholic? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's weird. It tastes like drinking a. It tastes like drinking incense for sure. Okay. Um, have you ever had it? No. I've only. I don't even know if I've had ranch water. I've had the Topo Chico. They're probably like ranch water with lime or something. Margarita flavored. Mm. I don't know. Mm. But I do also like. I love ranch salad dressing yeah. on like pizza. And oh yeah. In I put it in my burrito the other day just to moisten it up a little bit. You gotta have, bro. I, okay. We worked, my buddy Josh and I, at a his friend's sushi catering tent at a music festival. Mm -hmm. And so they would do sushi burritos or poke bowls. or And so this one lady said something that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And she's like, can I get this sauce and this sauce and put this sauce in there? And she's like, I'm a slut for sauce. She's like, I'm the sauce queen. Hmm. I'm like... I'm kind of a slut for sauce too, but I've always been ashamed to admit it. Yeah, yeah. There's something about it that you got to have that nice wet food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't like mayonnaise, but hmm. I will put it on a sandwich just to get a little bit more wet. No mayo ketchup? Like to dip fries in? Yeah. I'll do that too. Yeah. Um, but not like potato salad with mayo. No, thank you. Huh. Coleslaw with mayo. Straight spoonful of mayo. I'm good. Dude, I'm you never. Pass. You don't like straight spoonful of mayo. <laughs> um, no. Mayo ice cream. I haven't tried it. Neither have I. I won't. I won't write it off though. Um, I did eat on accident um, a mayo cake when I was younger. We were like 14. It was. Oh, it was like my friend's or my older sister's friend's birthday. And we were, like, hosting at our house. And then her other friend, like, always makes her, like, a April Fool's cake because it was mm -hmm. her birthday's on April Fool's Day. Um, and Are you sure about that, bud? <laughs> I think so. Are you she sure she's not fucking with you? <laughs> she could have been. Um, but we, uh, this is when we were first starting to experiment with Smoke and Reefer. Mm -hmm. um, and the group of boys I was there, we didn't even notice that there was layers of mayo between this cake and we just scarfed it down can you back it up why the fuck was there mayo in a cake well because it was a prank cake oh yeah uh, because of the april Fool's. i think i was so caught up on the birthday for april fools 
Yeah. Dude, I think three beers is kind of like my level <laughs> yeah, these days. Yeah. I don't drink That's that much fair. these days. That's fair. That's probably I'm healthy. sorry. That's probably quite healthy. I've completely lost your story two sentences after you said the thing that I forgot. Um... You know, you're reminding me a lot of myself at this moment, Laz. <laughs> I'm openly ADHD. Hell yeah. I think it's a societal problem. You know what? I'm Let a- me break it down for a second. Yeah? I think that it's these fucking things that are ruining all of our lives. Low attention span? Maybe it's the five second clips that we're all watching on the phone nonstop. You yeah. ever seen someone on TikTok? No. It's like this. Oh, and that's where all of our chins are going. (laughs) Dude, it's rough to watch. And I think the thing about it that's most rough to watch is that I know that I do it too. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. I'll do it on Instagram. Yeah, for sure. I don't use TikTok, but same shit. Instagram, Facebook, they all have those things. Yeah. And so it's just when I catch myself, usually I catch myself pretty quick. Mm-hmm. But I, I have to snap out of it. I'm like, what the fuck just happened to me? I know I shouldn't be doing this. It's yeah. like a spell, dude. It's cast on us. It is. It's very, it's like magnetic or something. It feels like a, a draw, um, almost out of our control. Um, but I kind of think the shortening attention span at a certain point will get so short that we won't even have the attention span to do that Mm. and we'll all want to be like that dude on the beach sitting as the palm tree just thinking just just fell out of a coconut tree yeah Mm -hmm. you know when i was when i was younger i always wanted to be a shepherd that's sick yeah it just sounds so cool um i've always yeah i've always enjoyed um smoking weed <laughs> I'm waiting to see how this ties together and a shepherd feels like the perfect profession for mm. that yeah um, but shepherds that's a tough job dude you gotta protect the flock oh yeah yeah sure don't you feel like it'd be too easy to get distracted when you're high and just neglect your duties no I feel like it would get me on the level the same level as the flock you know um, yeah but as a shepherd don't you have to be on a higher level than the flock <laughs> that's true they're just out there munching eating stuff too so they start kind. running like what are we running from <laughs> we're running from you <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i yeah i get what you mean i think um have you, have you ever read the book the alchemist was that required reading for you guys in school not that i remember i think you would fucking really enjoy that book it's on youtube if you want to listen to the audiobook for free and you know. the audiobook's not long. It's like six or seven hours. It's a short book. Huh. It's more of a... Like three work days, probably? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you have some easy days, huh? Or well, two hour days? Recently, yeah. So, the book... I'm going to struggle to remember. I think the, the whole point of it is that you listen to the signs that life gives you instead of mm. trying to force what you think should be happening into the situation. Hmm. And... The guy goes on this entire journey, spends it, the book spans years of his life, and he has this goal, you know, this personal legend that he's trying to fulfill. And before he even embarks on the journey, he kind of dilly dallies. He's a shepherd oh. and he can't leave his flock. He's like, I have a fucking flock, I have responsibilities and stuff. And then eventually yeah. he decides, he knows that he has to go on this thing if he's going to ever feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. and so he ends up selling his sheep traveling and the whole point he's trying to get to egypt but before he gets there you know mm. he's got to sail he's in spain i think mm. so he's got to sail across the mediterranean sea i believe so geography and um when he I lands ge- in that geology. port city yeah geology sorry <laughs> geology so, the study of Dwayne the rock johnson <laughs> um, long story short the whole thing is about listening to the signs that life gives you and I remember I don't remember reading that book in high school but I listened to it again as an adult fantastic book now I'm getting to the point where I'm uh-huh. trying to remember why I even brought it up shepherds flocks 
blocks. Mm-hmm. Dude, the guy had to, I think it kind of romanticized being a shepherd for me. Because yeah. even though the guy wasn't necessarily following his dream, they describe being a shepherd in a way where it's beautiful. Hmm. It's, you know, the oneness that you have to feel with the flock. Yeah. And what you are to this herd of sheep. And I mean, you, you could easily be like, oh, they're just sheep. But still, you know, yeah. that's your flock. Yeah. yeah. There's something special about that. But also yeah, there's a ton sure. of dangers out there. You know, there's wolves trying to get at your flock. Mm-hmm. You, and you have to be up to the challenge. Mm-hmm. And it's also a solitary life, which in some ways it's, I mean, there's no other humans out there with you. Yeah. You do get the energy from the other animals. Like maybe you have some dogs that help you out. Yeah. Maybe you write, have the write some poetry or something while you're out there. It is easy to romanticize being yeah. out on your own. It It is. It is. It's, it's good in doses for sure. Um, I think, I think actually, uh, in, in school, I struggled to do basically all of my assignments. Um, so I think Alchemist, we did read that. Whether or not I actually read it, you know, it sounds, Debatable. sounds very familiar. We're past the, um, um, we're past the, fuck, what's the thing in law where when you get past the... Point of no return? Yeah. We're See, past the point of no return. That felt like a... No, that's not true, but felt yeah, like yeah. a Trivial Pursuit question. Um, I got How right. do you think you would do in trivia? Terrible. I actually know I really do real bad. Yeah, I've tried a few times, and then I'm like, never heard of that. Nah, yeah. never heard of that. <laughs> statute of limitations is what it is. So basically, the statute of limitations is um, there's a period of time after a crime is committed where you can be prosecuted for that crime. Oh. And so, statute of limitations for not reading your summer reading in school. Yeah. We'll just call it, you know, ten years. Huh. So I think you're probably past the statute of limitations. Interesting. So, like, if I were to rob a bank and get away with it for 10 years, I'd yeah. be good? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the statute of limitations is on every crime. But, yeah, oh, you can get away with crimes. Yeah, they. I think it might vary by crime. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, by that's severity tricky. of the crime. So yeah. there's just some crimes. And I don't know how this law came about, but it was basically like, Hmm. Bro, you guys took way too long to catch me. I'm good. And they hmm. go, all right. He's right. He's good. Yeah. You know, I've always wanted to be a criminal. It just like, tell me about it, bro. Bonnie and Clyde. I actually don't know who they are, but uh, <laughs> criminals. Criminals. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Just on the you. Run, just like you know bandit. their name, and you know that they're criminals. I don't know where you need. Well, there was there was a song about them, and it sounded like they were criminals. And I was like, that sounds uh, cool as hell. I'm not sure. Bank robbers. Bank. Perfect. They went on a bank robbing spree. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. That sounds amazing. Yeah, um, I, there was a part of me that just always wanted that easy money. Yeah, and the adventure yeah. and the hey, Have you ever... Horses. Uh, here's a good question. What would be your superpower? Oh, um, that is a great question. Thanks. Yeah, I've got like a lot of Thanks, different yeah. superpowers. You got to pick one, though. Um, that I think would be cool. Um, but I, I'm a fan of cucumbers. I think they're really good. Mm-hmm. I think cucumbers are delicious. They're full of minerals and stuff but uh, my superpower would be able to would be to make a cucumber <laughs> appear in a person's pockets um, <laughs> on command and a limitless amount of cucumbers so like if you really needed to stop them you could just make hundreds of cucumbers come out of yeah pockets. for sure and they're just be cucumbers what if you're not wearing your... pants ah it wouldn't work it goes in your prison wallet Yep. Your prison wall is your bum. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's where the cucumbers come from. Dude. Okay. (laughs) Just unlimited cum water. Yeah. Well, I would have to have a second superpower, though. I need to be able to make uh, melons come out of (laughs) (laughs) Melons to appear out of thin air is what we would normally say, us people. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like... Yeah, I don't need to go down that rabbit hole. Please don't. So <laughs> the reason I ask is because every time, every time I try and um, answer the question of like, what superpower would you have? Uh huh. It was always how could I utilize this superpower to then become rich? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so the one that I always landed on was pausing time, like being able to control time. That 
I've thought about that before. That would be. Have you seen the? I think I'm just gonna stop you saying the try. phrase. Have you I seen mean, the movie Harry Potter? Click, click. Adam Sandler. Oh, I've heard of it. Yeah, so he basically gets a remote that oh, allows I've him. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah, he can yeah. like pause and play life. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Include an audience that. applause right now. <laughs> Avery saw a movie. So yeah, he gets the ability to control time. And I mean, that movie's hilarious, but it's also very sad because he kind of mm. fast forwards through life and then the remote goes like, oh, okay, you want to fast forward through life? And it does it automatically for him and oh. he misses out on a lot of important shit because he just doesn't want to deal with the tediousness of life. Yeah. So yeah. long story short, pause time. Just as the bank vault door is opening, uh huh, and then you could walk into the vault, stuff your pockets, walk right back out, hmm. right to where you were standing before. Boom, resume time. You're good. Get the hmm. fuck out of there. Be like, oh, actually, I changed my mind. I don't need it. Or maybe you know, you go through with your transaction. You go take a hundred bucks out the ATM. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually like, I've never been very money motivated. Mm. I've never I never had a lot of money didn't grow up with a lot of money I just don't really care much about money dude I mean I don't um, give a shit about money it's the yeah. stuff that the money gets you yeah it's the even, freedoms that the money affords you yeah well even that in a way like cause like people like are often like oh money will give you travel and freedom and yada 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 and maybe maybe I'm a bit more of a homebody than I really realize but like mm. Or I'm just easy to please, because um, I'm like, oh, I don't need to go anywhere. Like, if I have a week off from work, like, I don't need to go on a vacation. I'll just hang out. Um, yeah, I'm that way, too, unfortunately. Yeah. I think the people... Actually, I, I was hit the other day with this intense feeling of uh, FOMO. You know what FOMO is? Yes. Fear of missing out. No, FOMO's a Pokemon. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so... I was hit with this intense feeling of FOMO because a couple of people I know were talking about their travels to Thailand and Hawaii and all this. And they were going yeah. into depth of all the different places they've been to. And I'm like, I've never traveled like that. I don't know when I'll ever be able to travel like that. And just these mm -hmm. feelings of like, I know a lot of people that at my age have traveled a shit ton to other countries and stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people who haven't. But mm -hmm. that's not the people I'm paying attention to, you know? It's the people who have done these crazy trips and experienced yeah. these things. Yeah, And so I start to feel like, well, shit, dude, what am I doing with my life? You know, am I looking just... Looking at rocks. Looking at rocks. I didn't start looking at rocks till like, a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, a very short time ago. I mean, where I grew up, it was... Uh, I mean, it's not New York City, but it's still urban sprawl. Yeah, yeah. Nature is a beach where you have to pay like $20 an hour for parking and mm. getting there is an hour of traffic. And so it's like, uh, that's what nature is. Or you go to the swamp mm -hmm. and fucking get eaten up by mosquitoes. And then yeah. I get out here and, oh, nature's fucking sick. Nature is great. And even then, there's some days where I'm like, we should be hiking or something. I don't necessarily feel like it, but it's that mm. feeling like the mountains are right there. The coast is right there. Yeah. What am I doing? I don't feel yeah. like leaving the house, really. I feel content just hanging out. Yeah. And, you know, the money thing, more than anything, is that I get ideas for projects. Mm -hmm. Wood costs more than it should. It does. Tools. I have an, a nice set of tools, but even just like... A table saw would be nice. Mm -hmm. Or a skill saw. No, not a skill saw. What's I, the one that has like a track track saw? Something that gives oh. a nice straight cut. Yeah. And all these little things that... Do, are they necessary to do a project? No. Mm -hmm. Do they make it way easier? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Podcasting. This is a sweet setup for now, but the audio quality isn't great. Yeah. We're recording on a fucking iPhone. Yeah. We can have two cameras. <laughs> two lights. Nice setup. Mm -hmm. Not have to hold the mic in front of our face, have it on a stand, you know? Ooh. And so all those things, they cost money. And yeah. that's really what I'm, what I would want the money for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I do also, like I, I do crave money and I work hard to get money and I do want money. You fucking materialist piece of shit. I know, man. I want that Lambo. Uh, <laughs> no, but like, I just, 
I guess I'm not money inspired. It doesn't like inspire me. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, oh, I got a, a stack of cash, like which I've basically never had. Um, but I'm not like, oh, yay, like, or I wanna, I wanna go be work really hard to get some high level of education so I can make money. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just kind of like, yeah, I, it's a tool. It, it has to be used. I understand. I have to understand it and like participate in it. Um, but I don't want it. You know, I actually. Very content stacking rocks. Nice. Strolling through the woods, eating simple foods. What about stacking cash? Have you tried that? No, I probably should, though. (laughs) Dude, once you start this business, I'm not going to say the idea so that these vultures can take it from you, but the business, I feel like, can get some money. Yeah. And... No, I, I feel you. There have been times in my life when I was working on the solar field, we were making like three grand a week. Not which, bad. Insane, dude. Yeah. Insane. I don't have a penny of that left. Yeah. Because of my mentality with money was like, easy come, easy go. Fuck it, go. dude. I don't want to idolize money. Yeah. And then now I'm sitting here with no money. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> that would have been nice. Darn it. <laughs> yeah. I gotta just put away a little bit of that. But. Yeah. I think it's a balance, man, just like anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, we've all got bills to pay, just like I'm callback mentioned that at the top of the show. And you did? Yeah. Uh talking about the coconut tree guy. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Is it circle back? Circle <laughs> Circle back. <laughs> Not anything else. So, long story short, dude, money is important. Mhm. I think it's the it's not that, so there's an expression that people misquote is that money is the root of all evil. Mm-hmm. The expression is actually love of money or desire of money is the root of all evil. Oh. Or like lust for money or something like that is yeah. the root of all evil. It's not that huh. money in and of itself is bad. Yeah, yeah. It's just a It's just a, a tool. Medium. It's a means yeah. to an end. And so I we actually talked about this a little bit with that Alan Watts thing where he was saying that we often get the representation of something confused with the thing itself, especially in Western culture Uh and in this country. And so he compares it to thinking that the menu is the food or thinking that the money is the things you could buy with it. The money isn't important. The representations of these things of this value isn't important. Hmm. The the reason we care about it is because it gets us the things of value. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. my rant about money. No big deal. Yeah, money. It's, um, I've always kind of viewed it as a placeholder, you know, mm-hmm. as it's, uh, it's synonymous with the, the number zero. It has no value, but it holds place for value. Mm-hmm. Um, huh. Yeah. That's an interesting take. Yeah. There has to be something in front of the zero. I'm probably looking at it too literally. I like the idea. Maybe. I don't know. It, it, it feels a little literal. Um, it's just like, yeah, it's just, it's a placeholder mm-hmm. for your time, for whatnot. And like, if I'm not much of a, a math guy, um, but. <laughs> Dude, speaking of that. Yeah. Let's wrap this up with a story. We're at an hour 20. Ooh, pretty good, huh? Not bad, not bad. So an old buddy from the solar field is working with a current buddy on the solar field. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, oh, hey, you know, what's going on with Laz? He's like, oh, Laz got out of the trade. He's into marketing now, whatever. And so the guy's like, oh, that's what my daughter's trying to do. She's trying to shift careers, get into Mm -hmm. marketing. And so he wants to get in touch and like wants me to talk to his daughter, see like how I got a job, maybe give her some pointers or whatever. Yeah. And so I told him, dude, in all honesty, like I'll talk to your daughter, happy to talk to her and share my experience. But Uh in all honesty, the reason I got this job was like 60% lucky timing, Mm -hmm. maybe 20% attitude and like willingness to work with the team, Mm -hmm. 10% skill. And mm-hmm. and I looked at that back. I'm like, wait a minute, that's only ninety <laughs> percent. I was just gonna say, <laughs> like, clearly math was not a factor in my employment at this yeah. job because I would not have this job right now. Well, that's good. So, yeah, yeah, math not my strong suit. Put a yeah. dollar sign in front of it. I'll tell you how much money we're making, dude. 
Yeah. Easy. Not much. <laughs> Not much at all. <laughs> Don't get me started, bro. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's been a treat. There's been um, it feels like a bit of a challenge coming in for week two here um, mm-hmm. on the old podcast on the old. But I feel like we're sticking true to our name. We're definitely undereducated and definitely overstimulated, without a doubt. Um, but just proud of it. Mm-hmm. You know, ADHD and proud. Yeah, yeah. Openly ADHD and nice and proud. Um, I'd like to thank Basecamp for uh, potentially sponsoring this podcast in the future. Mm. We can mention them here. Basecamp. Do you see? Do you like that Basecamp thing last yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get a package of the legit thing because that was just the bucket was nice. I yeah. thought the bucket was a nice graphic. Yeah. Family friendly. You know. Yeah. Avery sister owned. Yeah, sister cool. owned. That's a good quality to have. There you go. And then. Uh, what I like that the Zoigel Haas not actually not sponsored. sponsored. <laughs> Dude, editing is a lot of fun. I'll talk yeah. shit about editing all day and say it's a lot of work, but it's worth it to yeah. me. Even if only like two people get to see it or pay attention to it, I'm more than happy to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you saw the intro video. That was good. It was a lot of fun. That was in depth too. and I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. And yeah. um, it was just going like to be... A, it was like a movie. It was like an action movie. Yeah. It was just going to be a pre-flight video kind of thing. Uh-huh. And then I think I had the idea of the societal collapse. I'm like, how far can I take this? Yeah. It ended up being fun. Pretty far. Yeah. I know there's some people <laughs> <laughs> There's some people who see that and uh, it'll make them uncomfortable. Uh-huh. Because unfortunately, it's a real possibility in our day and age. But yeah, that's where I like to toe the line. I'm a little bit of an edgy kind of guy. Ooh. Like a like a table, yeah. Especially edges. this table. Yeah, lots of edges. Live edges, wany edges. Wany edges. Um, edges. I feel like we should wrap up this podcast with just a nice gaze at the camera. Just a couple of deep breaths. And just gaze right at it. You know. Fair. On three. Yeah. yeah. One, One, two, two three. three. Yeah. Thanks for uh, joining us.